Uh, hi, my name is Miles. My name is Sarah Di Costanzo. Sabine May. Chuck. <laughs> my name is Olivia Chamberlain. My name is Nora Foley. Sarah Haas. My name is Danny's sister, Jopolis. Ethan. Mackenzie. Mahag. I do like math. I think it's very interesting to kind of see the way that problems are solved and to kind of have uh, kind of background for other things that you might be looking at, like in science or whatnot. Um, and I think it's also, it kind of explains things in the world sometimes. I like math because I, li I think it's cool, you know, it's abstract. Um, I dislike math because it's hard for me, but it's a net positive. I enjoy doing things that are logical and have a set process. Sometimes the processes can be multiple to get to the same answer, but it's very nice to always know that there is a clear way to the solution. It's not really a subject I'm too passionate about. STEM is not really my specialty, but I mean, I can still do it, so might as well. Um, I like doing algebra the most, so like most of my classes in high school have been that, so like I haven't minded, but Sometimes when we're like, it's something that I'm not really used to, or it's kind of confusing, it's, it's just harder for me to enjoy because it's just harder to understand. Yeah. I think math is okay. It's um, enjoyable when you know what you're doing. It's okay. Um, it's not like my favorite, favorite subject, but it's not like, the worst. I find it very satisfying to be able to solve problems and know the right answer and be able to check back. I tend to prefer uh, more humanities and uh, arts, so like music, um, writing, and history. I do like math with regard to the logic of it. I've always um, found to be um, pretty cool, especially just solving those kinds of problems. Even if it's not one of my thirds, I still find it interesting. Like I like it when I understand it. And when I go for help, it's easier to understand it, but in general, like I definitely like it more than I have in the past. And it depends on the teacher too, a lot. Um, I think my personal success in math class depends on just grasping the material from the beginning, because I feel like math builds, so if you don't know, you don't know, in my personal opinion and experience. I need to have like good notes and like just like being on top of it, good time management, um, getting like full understanding of the material. Succeeding in math, um, you, it's really it's understanding and when you understand you practice, practice, practice so you get it down. Well to me success is understanding it. And I feel like I understand it best if I learn it, then like create a list of questions before the tests, and then I ask the questions that I have before the test so I know what I'm doing. Um, my personal success in math has definitely relied on just my ability to like persevere through everything because I mean math doesn't come the most naturally to me. Um, and I think at RMHS, like, I think some of the teachers are, I mean, it, it's like any subject, some teachers are just better suited for some students than others. And, um, I mean, I, like, personally think I haven't had the best experience with math, but I also definitely haven't had the worst. I need to have a teacher that is, like, good at teaching. My dad, he helps me a lot outside of school. And obviously my teachers, um, I've had, I've liked all my math teachers so far. They've been really helpful. Um, probably just the teaching style. Is like I've had a lot of different experiences with different teachers. Definitely having like peers that you feel that you can ask questions to and a teacher that you feel that you can ask questions to. Um, I think it's definitely dependent on like the people that you're doing it with. My personal success in a math class probably comes down to just my ability to think independently. I'm always reaching out to teachers for help when I need it, even though um, I try to minimize that. And to have those resources available is especially important. And also availability for like office hours is a big thing for me, like flex or after school. Um, definitely practice. Mainly it's just the amount of problems that I'm exposed to. When I hear some theory explained to me, I sort of take it in, but I really only get it down once I start doing the problems and putting in the work. 
and that really drives it home. It's like the physical versus mental learner thing. I mean, doesn't surprise me because I've been told similar statistics before. I couldn't tell you why. Like personally, I've always felt encouraged to go into STEM, so I don't have any like experience to support that, but can't argue with numbers. Um, uh, well, I think that STEM fields are very demanding as far as academics and uh, knowing what you want to do kind of early on in your high school career. Um, and also some people just have a harder time doing those things. So, you know, doing math is hard and then you start to hate it. So like, why would I do STEM if I hate it? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't terribly surprise me, but it is a little bit surprising. I think it's double the amount of boys because historically um, the STEM fields have been more geared towards men. And um, I think that's, they're still maybe not equal representation, so that's probably a contributing factor to why there's less women. I suppose that it could be like due to a lot of confidence issues maybe, they kind of think it's too difficult, because um, it is difficult, but you can, everyone can do it if you just work at it, but that, that could probably be a faster factor in it. Some of it relates to stereotypes, some of it relates to just dumb norms, but like, I mean, it's obviously not great, and it's also just a lack of representation too. Maybe it has to do with like, um, like inequality and like payment. I think because um, it's just that STEM fields have been pretty predominantly uh, like male throughout uh, history. So I think like trying to break through uh, that is a little like almost kind of like intimidating for girls. I think. I feel like there isn't enough representation for like women in STEM, so it's like really important that there is some in the future. Maybe it's an interest thing. Um, some people have different interests than others, and I guess it's more skewed, skewed towards guys because they think more about what they sort of, they're more interested in it. Historically, there have probably been stereotypes. Um, where um, men have probably been deemed more fit for those kind of jobs in, um, in STEM uh, as opposed to women. And even then, I'm not sure if it still continues today whether or not there's a strong divide or whether it's more equal as far as men who want to um, have a career in STEM versus women. Uh, I think it, I would imagine if I had to guess it would still maybe not so significantly but still be more geared towards men. It just probably comes down to that in the past women haven't had the same opportunities as men that they do today for that. I would assume there's nothing blatantly standing in the way of a girl wanting to do math in RMHS but um, I think that as far as the stereotypes go that could make it be harder but I think that it's a good thing for everyone to try everything they want to. That have a lot of female friends taking equivalent STEM classes to those of my male friends, which I think is good. I know in middle school I went to like a STEM field trip almost, and I remember that was really fun. So, um, and that was to like encourage girls to get more into STEM fields. So I think that if RMHS like keeps having uh, that, like trying to encourage people, like try and like see like the fun side of math almost like maybe that will help encourage more people into them yeah. regardless of what you think your skill set is um, whether you like math a lot or whether you don't or you're, you think you're not good at it I think there's infinite ways that people can help you to improve it it can be difficult but it is it is gratifying to solve a problem stay in school <laughs>